feelings hurt. Read this. Uh, hello, welcome. Are we starting? Yeah. Great. Hello, welcome back to Payments Void for another episode of Carmen Line Short Review. Carmen Line wow. Short Review. Wow, that's show. like a song. <laughs> we have a song now. <laughs> Are you going to uh, jump in? Here? No. Okay. Last chance. Common lines. Show of fear. Common lines. No, I'm not We get in. very, very bored here in the void, <laughs> folks. Uh, not me. What, what is this? This is the only place in the entire universe, pluriverse, multiverse, all verses, choruses, and Spider-verse. songs. And Spider-Verse. Where you can watch three cursed Filmmakers reviewing user submitted short films. That's a good idea. Sweet. It's not my idea. We're forced to do it. Well, I've Thank given, the uh, big guy. I guess we are. The big Thanks. red guy. Thanks. Thanks. He's over there. He's over there. He's over there. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, P Dog. P Dog. P Dog. <laughs> uh, who's this gross? Cool, We're reviewing a movie today. Okay. Who's this by? <laughs> <laughs> that is what. Why we're here? Yeah, this is faceless but remembered. <laughs> faceless but <laughs> Re- remembered. Faceless. This is a faceless comma. but remembered. Faceless, comma, but, but remembered. remembered. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Ah, D. Funny guy. Funny guy. Funny guy. Uh, written and directed by Shelby Baldock. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's all stuff I was supposed to say. So there you go. There you go. Stole your thunder. Oh, stole my thunder. Remember okay. your thunder? Remember when it was yours? It is mine. <laughs> <It's> your <name. laughs> uh, I took your thunder. Faceless, but remembered. <laughs> yes. Faceless, but remembered. This is a movie that was sent to us. And what is the synopsis? Are you asking me? Yeah. All right. This is a. I didn't mo- watch it. It's a pretty long synopsis. <laughs> you want me to catch you up? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a movie about a guy who. Uh, ultimately is struggling uh, with his decision of what to buy at a grocery store. Yeah. But uh, in between uh, uh, him considering that decision, we go on a surreal journey of uh, exploring the frustrations, challenges, and struggles that come with being a newly uh, re- new recipient of a kidney and the pressures that come with such a responsibility. Wow. All right. That's That's what this movie is. Well, there happens to be a link in the description if you so desire to watch the movie instead of take uh, his synopsis. Yeah, it's better if you watch it. It's much better. I'm honestly not that good. Let's uh, open this up for first. (laughs) Fuck. Open this up for first impressions. What was my first impression? I don't know. (laughs) Guys, what was my first impression? I don't know. Your first impressions. (laughs) Here, let me tell you your first impressions. Yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me. So Dee's first impressions were that it was a little confusing, um, but uh, you you ended up kind of liking how it ended. Not really. No? Okay. No. What's your first impression? <laughs> um, my first impression was that the, uh, the movie had things that I really enjoyed in it, like the tone. The tone was pretty cool. Cinematography was pretty cool. Um, but the character stuff kind of made me question what the hell i didn't really understand a lot of why they were why characters were acting the way they were and then the ending came and then i was like oh and that's it <laughs> um like I, he's doing a yo-yo trick right there we we all uh, liked the mother part as we'll call it we call it the mother sequence um but yeah other than that i i wasn't i was like 50 percent impressed 50 percent disappointed wow yeah that's a uh, hundred hundred percent. Fifty plus. Yeah. So that doesn't leave any room for anything else. It's just disappointed and impressed. You sure you want to go all in like I think, that? I think I think you're right. Actually, okay. that's a hundred percent Ron Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great review. Wait, what? What percentage do you have to fall under to to get a rotten score? I under think it's sixty. Or something. Under like fifty nine is the 59. the number. So this yeah. has so this is a Rotten Tomato then. Ooh. Ooh. Can you go? Can you go? Me. You. All right. Uh, so my general feeling was that uh, this movie had more things that bothered me than things that I loved. But the caveat to that, the things that I loved, I really loved. So it almost equaled to like 50 Not 50. quite. <laughs> I didn't like this movie. Uh, 
No, for me, um, we spent so much time with these characters, and uh, I, I never was given like a reason to really root for any of them. Yeah, I, I felt like every character was unlikable, um, which is okay if that sure. if that's leading to something. Sure, you know, and I just felt like because of the 180 ending, it's like, well, we weren't leading anywhere. We we're leading to a bag of carrots. Um, so it just, t- to me, the ending kind of like took all the frustrations that I had up to that point, and instead of making them worth it, said, sorry to waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, I mean, I loved the kidney popping out segment through the fireworks especially right. and i like the escalation leading up to that yeah got really interesting got really tense yeah yeah when it started coming very clear like oh this is like a surrealist movie i started having some fun yeah up to that point it was just weird and bizarre it, but not in the good way it was just confusing like i'm like who are these people and what are why are they doing these things you yeah. know and if the only answer is because it was in his imagination then so what it's just so what yeah, I pretty much feel the same way, but I think I liked it a little bit more. Like, He's not. You're like 51. Like, yeah, I'm at like I'm at like uh, <laughs> maybe like 60. Like, maybe something like Ooh, that. 60, 60 40. 60, That's 40. a green. Yeah. Uh, red. Red's good. Yeah, right? red is good. Red's good. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I find you, a lot wait, of my. You like f- this more than dis- dislike? No, no, I'm a green. You're He's green. A, he's red. You 60 percent hated it. Yep. Okay. I find that a lot of my favorite movies uh, tend to be around the 60 percent mark. I <laughs> that's, really, that's kind of funny. I don't look at Rotten oh, Tomatoes. You're talking about Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. I thought you. Were, I thought you meant for movies yourself. I yeah, really yeah. Like our movies. I like, I like about sixty <laughs> percent. Yeah. It's the movies I hate. Forty percent of the yeah. movie are my favorite movies. <laughs> Not to digress, uh, but yeah. So the beginning is what I had the biggest issue with. I felt that it was uh, sort of confusing, and it it's was kind of a little meandery I felt in the beginning um, like the first six minutes and then when we were in t- the convenience store and and we kept having this back and forth with his uncle um, it got a little bit more interesting because I felt like I understood uh, the dynamic between the characters and I understood what they were doing for each other a little better and I kind of liked the idea that he's this teen who's like or young adult that is um, kind of frustrated living within his new dietary constrictions and wants to do all this stuff. And at first we have this kind of uh, guardian who is helping him do the things he needs to be doing. And then seeing that turn a little bit sinister was kind of cool. Uh, and um, But it did – it seemed a little bit repetitive. And there, there was this weird line where I couldn't tell exactly if – once he started getting like abs- like with the the saw in his hand, like I was like, this is almost absurd. How over the, the deli top- slicer? Yeah, the deli slicer yeah. thing. I was like, this is crazy because of how insane his uncle is right here. It's like yeah. he's maniacal almost, right? Like borderline. This like is where villain. I kind of got. Lo- I like that. I almost gave up on the movie. Yeah, because I, I was like, okay, he he's a psycho, but like the son, the nephew or whatever, he's like completely agreeing he's like oh yeah i'm being an asshole yeah i'm like i haven't seen that evidence yeah right. so it did I don't get a feel little like weird. he's being an asshole right yeah and he's being an asshole <laughs> but as it progressed and got more and more intense i understood a little bit more what they were trying to do there with those scenes um and ultimately i kind of liked the idea behind that and i liked a lot of the execution um but the the ending i'm not a big fan of how it ended for the same reasons you mentioned. So there you go. Bam. Bam. Done. Well, bam. Hey. Over. Take it easy with those bams. Yeah. Bam. Jeez. They bounce all over the place in here. Oh. Um, um, hmm. Ooh. That was nice. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go into our first topic. Writing had... So we, we always talk about how endings say something about the movie. Uh, and in here, this ending... You, you guys didn't like very much. No. Uh, I kind of like endings that way, where, where it just said, what. it's hard to describe because I, I both like and hate these kinds of endings. 
um, where they just said, uh, just kidding, you know, everything was actually in his mind or whatever. Uh, if it has a point to it, I like it. If it doesn't have a point to it, I don't. And this didn't really have a point to it. Uh, what, you know, what are, what are we implying here at the end? That everything that he just saw was just, I don't know. Just a, like his mental yeah, man. Just, it's like fantasy. his projection of, of all the things he's frustrated about. Yeah. And he's going to choose to eat carrots, but uh, now he won't have to be frustrated about those things. I guess. Because he got carrots. <laughs> I don't know. Well, he saw that if he chose the 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 pork things, then he would have gotten his kidney ripped out. Good point. Good point. Are you, uh, I so. guess he wouldn't have deserved his kidney. Yeah. I think that's the message. Yeah. He wouldn't deserve his kidney to keep it if he uh, didn't treat it nicely. Oh, there you go. Yeah. What did he say at the girl at the end here? Was it just him introducing himself? Yeah. And like, that hey, was it? Yeah, and she says, nice to meet you, and that's it. Okay. So I wonder if it's supposed to, supposed to say something about his confidence, but I don't really But the understand. whole movie is not even really about his confidence. Yeah. That's what's weird about it. Yeah. The, the movie's mostly about his uncle, right? Uh, this, this, this driving force, this driving antagonist. I guess he's because a strong force in the movie. He's a very strong force, but it like it doesn't say anything about our main character. Who's yeah, but camp. I don't get. I mean, his uncle doesn't have an arc either. Yeah, he's no, just no, like I'm just saying. And he he's introduced to us in a way that's like just not likable. Like I never liked him being the sage, you know, the the mentor to him. Yeah. Like, because of the way he was introduced, like like right off the bat, it's like okay, he's a sleaze ball. Yeah. You know, can I talk about my favorite piece of writing in the whole thing? Absolutely. Um, I didn't understand the context of why we were seeing this, but they they told these like little imaginative vignettes about oh, yeah. who their donor was. Yeah. And the one he tells about this guy who's yeah. who's a preacher, this little story within the story was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Like I loved, like I loved this movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good. I thought, wow, like when I felt more sad when he got his divorce papers than I ever did for any other character. <laughs> and this is a fantasy inside of a fantasy. Yeah. Whoa. Yep. So Inception. This is a strange thing is with uh, with motivation here and th- throughout the whole thing, because what you just said about us seeing this fake character who's made up their their motivations for everything is just straight explained to us over narration. And so it kind of makes sense. But this whole, I think, the whole story here about this guy, I don't feel like the uh, motivations of any of the characters were proper. And I felt like I could forgive that after the ending took place. Where I'm right. just like, oh, oh yeah. everything's yeah. just fake anyway. Yeah, so like the the girl from the grocery store yeah. shows up at his work and right. is like, I quit my job and now we're going to run away. Right. And I care so much about so you much, right. and you doing what I want. Yeah. Which make, just, just made no sense coming. Like, she just met him. Yeah. And she was, like, not that impressed by him. And the the uncle here <laughs> the uncle turns straight psycho yeah like he was he was like this kind of buddy guy but then like as soon as and i and i kind of i kind of understand how you can put up a, uh, a facade right and to to show yeah i'm your buddy and then but actually i'm not i never got those hints of actually i'm not your buddy yeah so it just came off as this guy's your you're kind of a buddy character and so until we see our main character you know take out his phone for the meds thing it seemed like the uncle completely changed character right then and there about, hey, take your meds. Like, like suddenly he became like this like different person. And violent. Yeah, like he was suddenly really aggressive. Right, like right so here. There was a, yeah, and he like, they have a little like, shoving I didn't, match. I did not get that at all. I'm like, was that on accident? So there was tons <laughs> of stuff that made me just go, what the heck is going on? This yeah. is not normal. Yeah. But then we are we're put in this place at the end where we go, okay, I guess it's fine that that was all so weird because right. it wasn't real, but that actually cheapens the whole experience that, we just had. That cheapens it, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's far better that, if anything, the imagined sequence seems hyper real. Right. You know, like frighteningly too real. Right. 
So um, I, I want to talk about this parallel that that I'm sure all of us saw with Mother, the, yeah, that movie, um, where everything just gets just insane. We're big fans of Mother. Yeah. Um, and in Mother, that you know, this kind of part happens too, right? Where we have a main character who is straight up just like just being assaulted yeah just assaulted you know at the very very end of the movie she's been beaten up and then she gets uh she gets like she burns the house down right yeah. so spoilers. She, what spoilers <laughs> yes yes um but she burns the house down and then she's just a charred mess at the end just a body that her husband's then carrying right yeah and it's like that is still an ending that still contextualizes everything that we saw right the, the ending of that movie where she takes out her, or he takes out the girl's heart at the end, it's now like a diamond or a crystal of some sort, um, it's like it's now saying something about what he has done throughout this whole thing, or it's saying something about what she's done throughout this whole thing. It's an ending that contextualizes everything. And it reconnects, it connects us back to the beginning. Right. It explains but, why we saw what we saw. The but beginning. the thing is, it doesn't cheapen everything yeah. that just happened, yeah. right? So we have her wake up at the end anyway, who may or may not be the same person, may or may not be the same kind of idea that's happening or a cyclical thing. But even so, we have a definitive ending that says something about what we just saw. Yeah. Even if it is fake, right? Or even if it is surreal, or yeah. even if it is, you know, not realistic. Uh, and I feel like that's what we needed here, was that jump back to reality made everything disappear. Made, made, made everything that we just watched just disappear. Yeah. Like it, like it could have been cool if like when they drive off here, like he continues driving off and we sit with him, and then like his wound is gone maybe, and then maybe the girl is next to him, right? Like a few shots later or something. Right. Yeah. Something to, it's to a, more or less a blend. Smoother. Yeah. Transition. Yeah. I th- I think that transition that you're talking about I think works for something like this because, because that's what the story was about in the yeah. first place. Um. Whereas this decision where it hops back right here, this is not what the movie was about, right? It's not about his choice of these two foods. It's about him as a person. But way to go, choosing the carrots. Yes. Congratulations. Healthy route. Healthy route. Uh, if you don't have your uh, health and... Uh, you don't have anything, really. I want to say that the movie was, mm-hmm. other than that, well written, because the, because uh, the plot played out, I think, somewhat realistically, and it gets a lot of things right that a lot of movies get wrong. Uh, things like like just plain dialogue, you know. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. I can give you that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's like, really easy to to see that we're shitting on a movie, but we always do. Yeah. Uh, the it's dialogue is pretty for. good. Yeah. Got a uh, reputation to uphold. And I do like. Well, I guess that's in direction. Or, or, should we move on to direction? Let's do it. Um, I like the execution of this movie, more or less. Uh, but that's neither it, here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> I find it really confusing the direction. Uh, you know De- David Fincher's movies? Yep. And shows. Or show. How many shows has he made? He's made a bunch. Let's talk more, more about, about David Fincher. Commercials. What about it? No, no, no. Let's talk he's about done this. done commercials. He's done music videos. <laughs> Land the plane, man. So, so no, David no, Fincher in started in... Yeah, thank you. Oh, uh, little known fact about David Fincher. Yeah. D, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um... David Fincher has a very, very uh, obvious style about his movies, and it's there. Thank God. It is there regardless of what kind of story that we're saying, that we're telling. And it makes everything that he talks about very, very, very dark. So in a show like... Uh, House of Cards. Yes, House of Cards. Um, it is a dark show, but it's kind of absurdly dark in the beginning when it's just kind of about this political thing that's happening we sure we sure we have a dark character but it's not that it's not as dark as something like uh you know girl with the dragon tattoo or or uh, seven yeah or seven 
and it's just like or or uh panic room is another one panic room is something that yeah there's something kind of scary happened but it doesn't need to be this obscenely dark and do you mean escape room no panic room yes, escape room is great 100 percent, really good uh aesthetic yeah but the aesthetic doesn't seem to match the story so much um, and I find that a lot here where we have a lot of these, uh, you know, really low kind of bassy things that are happening and these, you know, kind of creepy zooms and dollies that, that we have. Uh, and then more or less David Fincher-esque lighting, you know, with all this uh, kind of green tones and uh, butterfly lights and, and some purple highlights here and there, which is interesting. Uh, anyway, but it, it just... To me, this isn't that dark of a story, and the tone, to me, is different from the narrative here, and it just feels a bit weird. I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel like it was a dark tone or look. This this doesn't look dark to you? It looks dark, but it didn't feel dark. Or exactly. Exactly yeah. my point. But it, the tone didn't feel dark, and I didn't think that <laughs> the cinematography was suggesting that this is dark content. That's interesting. I wonder, I wonder what you would dark. consider dark then. I don't know, just because it's in a convenience store that's just in the middle of nowhere, so it's like kind of shoddy lighting. Know, like and it makes sense. Like to me. very dimly lit and lots of very long lenses. The makers of this program would like to interrupt this program to talk about their other programs. Go D. If you happen to be a filmmaker and you've made a short film and you want to hear us talk about it, you can submit it to us via the link in the description. And if you love what you are seeing here and want to dive deeper into making better movies, you need to join us at our Facebook group, The Carmen Line Cult. There, we have daily discussions about filmmaking, we have weekly live streams, and all kinds of other cool cult-like activities. And now back to the program. That, that all suggests darkness to me. That all suggests, you know, undertones of something bad. You know, this this kind of these kind of shots. In this scene, it was, but in this scene, it matches because his hand's about to get cut off. Uh, yeah, the tone matches the argument that they're having. Yeah. Sure, but the aesthetic overall is kind of the same. I'd say the most of the movie had a sense of foreboding. Yeah, yeah, some sort of sinister kind of thing. When her character is reintroduced, it it like everything did turn evil. I felt like. Well, when she was every time that her face pops up, like the first time in the it's party, like a half, it's half like this, lit face. It's like this broom is, yeah. what, is what happens, right? The, that sound, and that's not a it's not a happy sound. I mean, why else would they put that sound in there other than look something's something's happening? Dude, what I, what I see is I just see that's just how it's lit. Like I see that's it's a gas station in who knows where at night that is probably closed. And so the lights are just dim because it's so the aesthetic you know, doesn't hours. doesn't speak tone to you at all. Not in this case because I guess maybe because I connected with what the story was, what was happening in the story. Yeah. So I just took it as like oh, that's just what it looks like. You're probably more into the story than you were with the aesthetic. Yeah. I was probably more withdrawn. And to me, it was it was a weird dissonance that was happening there. Uh yes. And no. <laughs> Taylor's usually this way. <laughs> what, yeah. what you're doing right now? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I felt a strong aesthetic that seemed seemed to suggest to me uh, doom of some kind. So I'd have to hook my uh, my trailer to the D train. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then. You have anything else to talk about? Direction? In directing, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, so we talk a lot about direction as being defined. We'd like to define direction as being able to clearly see that there was a vision that was carried out to fruition successfully. Yeah. Right? That uh, what ended up on screen clearly didn't happen by accident or we're not seeing a feeble attempt at painting one picture and ending up with another uh in that sense i i see a pretty strong director here in that sense in what yeah. you just said yeah yeah um 
I don't know that the vision they chose necessarily helps the story. Well, let me let me also like the vision can get in the way of the story. Right. Let me let me annotate. So what? Yeah, what you said, I would agree with. Uh, you can. I think you can make any kind of story with any kind of aesthetic. Right. It just you can do that because that's what defines direction. Right. Um, and in the ways of David Fincher, we've seen him pull off things like that. Again, like Panic Room is in a very very dark feeling film without it being too dark of a of content. Uh, and I guess what we have here is tone that doesn't seem to be paid off in narrative at least at least from my point of view and i've hooked my trailer to that train <laughs> in our point of view yes sort of yes uh yeah and so and so in that case uh, it's like what what do you define as direction in that sense mm. you know does someone want to tell this p- particular story and have people feel really you know that that foreboding kind of feeling throughout the whole thing yeah you know are you trying to do that because if you are if it, i don't think it's working yeah i don't know i mean it's written and i believe it said it was written and directed by the same person mm-hmm. shelby um shelby baldock and so if that's the case then it's hard to imagine that anything we're seeing is not in intentional right so in that case i'd be kind of a flub I'd have to wonder what the, I don't know, what the intention was. Well, this, it felt personal to me, this movie. Oh, it this definitely felt like felt a personal, personal movie. Yeah. Uh, if I had to guess, I would assume that the filmmaker is probably connected to this um, community Yeah. Um, in some way. I would say so, too. And so we, what we might be seeing is some projection Ooh. of some inner emotions that aren't aren't fully contextualized for the audience that yeah right that, i like think it's that's a darker exactly what it is it's a darker tale in their head right than okay. it is to our eyes so i have i have a parallel to make so uh have you seen whiplash uh-huh whiplash mm-hmm. that movie also has a dark tone to it uh, aesthetically and it, and it has characters in there that define almost the dark tone right especially the our, our main antagonist um and the theme, the theme of the whole thing, also. So, uh, I don't know what I was going with this, other than what you were just. What did you just say about the person? Directing? I was just oh, saying because they're connected with it. Yeah. Because in Whiplash, I don't, I don't, I don't think a ton of people have been, you know, in that predicament in jazz band, right? Uh, getting yelled at by a teacher. I've been in that predicament, and it can feel like that, right? It can feel that dark and that intimidating you know, when you're in that kind of position. And I feel like that is what they're going for here, where you're just like, everyone is telling me what to do, and I just hate this, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but again, the, the, the distance there was a little weird. Yeah. So, and that, you know, that might be more of a writing thing than a directing thing. Yeah, might be. Um, but sometimes I think all filmmakers are guilty of this, ourselves included, and some of the greatest included, sure. of having yeah. more... Um, basically of being too close to their own material. Yeah, and this felt like that to me because it yeah. felt like we had uh, bullet points. It felt like we had bullet points here and there that were like, make sure that you have, you know, the the guy who discovers his uncle has been drinking, you know, may, maybe and he discovers that, uh, I don't know, that this girl wants him to do what he shouldn't do. Like, it feels like there's big ideas here, but it doesn't feel like they've been introduced into a story uh, organically, you know, doesn't feel natural. It feels pretty artificial, and I think it's because of there's there's lack of a connecting tissue there. I think that kind of gets into the the dreamlike stuff in this movie, yeah. where and I think that's why it worked, the dreamlike stuff. Y- yes, I think what they could have done better was is the the transition into the dream and the laying out the pieces to be more. Um, Oh, that's interesting. More, more blatant. I, I don't want to say yeah. obvious, or I want because I'm not trying to say it needs to like be spoon fed per no, se. No. But like, it communicated a little better communicated maybe. Um, because what I I found was like I would like like the whole uh, deli slicer scene with the guy and his uncle. I was like, this is insane. 
and it's like I can't tell if they don't realize how insane this actually is right or if this is uh, just supposed to be absurd and surreal and not realistic. I wonder if the girl, if her, if she was supposed to be that transition. Maybe. See, seeing her character pop up over and over in impossible ways. That, and that that's the thing, because it's like I see that at first and, until it's revealed later on where it's absolutely right. obvious. Right. Where it's like, are they making insane yeah. mistakes here or are they <laughs> – doing something uh, except That's interesting except the actual structuring of the movie would indicate that the <clears throat> fantasy segment begins very early in the movie yeah, yeah. almost yeah. immediately it's almost in the first scene it's like, i think it's that's the first part of minutes, when yeah. he picks up the bag it, right. it yeah. starts then i think that's part of the problem which means we don't actually know any of the characters <laughs> yeah right so, yeah so that's that's 30 <laughs> seconds into it yeah that's interesting. I mean, so, yeah, it's literally we watch a whole movie to have it sort of flipped around at the end. And that's the most disgusting snack yeah, I have I, ever I actually, seen. I actually want to. Is that a real? I want to talk about this. What even is, is this? A, this would be a production topic. Yeah, can we go into production? Yeah. Or, or are we done with directing? Oh, I'm dude, that is a directing. prop. It says Baldock Farms. Yes. See, that's what dude. I want to talk about. Okay. So in, okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold. Production. Production. Okay, now you can applaud. Hey, <laughs> Shelby Baldock. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as he picked that up, I was like, there's no bag on earth. That, that has a pig that eating has a pig baby eating. pigs. Yeah. That I was like, that's a great looking. so disgusting. Yeah, that's a great looking bag. I'm so glad that you made the actual prop. Yeah. Yeah, that is That awesome. is so wonderful. Look at that. That has 500 milligrams sodium, 30% that, of your daily value. <laughs> it's too much sodium. It's too much. Yeah, 300 milligrams potassium. Uh, yeah, that is so cool. Um, I love that. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, they did that really well. Yeah. I, I, I love doing stuff like that. Me too. There's a couple couple projects where we had to create products for characters. It's just fun. I love that. So kudos on that. There's, uh, that, there's that shot. Also, in, yeah, scary. Look at this. like she was about to die or he was about to die <laughs> also in the production side of things d yes stop talking about shots i like right. shots now shots are not part of the production <laughs> not at all <laughs> there's another one uh what five locations four there's a lot we got, yeah so we got grocery store if we count the outside and the inside we got house we got the house we got we got this, this place again so That's three and three. a half oh, oh and, and the, this place yeah. and the church I mean, this was massive. Pretty good, yeah. Every time I see a grocery store in, in a short film, I'm always impressed. Yeah, it's always like instant All impressed. Right. <laughs> Unless you see tons of people shopping, yeah. and then you go, "Oh, you're just gorilla. You're just yeah, gorilla then, shooting yeah, then you're just in, there. in an open <laughs> grocery store, like, well, like uh, a Max. Terry Kendall and the yeah, yeah. Max Gaff's film. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Um, but yeah, they, they they had their own grocery store. Uh, looked like it was in the middle of the night. Yeah. Is, yeah. hey, it's cool. That's awesome. I love that. Absolutely. Um, same thing with the gas station. Oh, the bathroom. The gas station bathroom was a really cool location. I felt like they built that. Dude, I was going to say the exact same thing, but I wasn't sure if that was in production or not. This this shot is way too wide to be a small bathroom. They either use an insanely wide lens, but look, there's no, there's no uh, bending on the outside. But I mean, maybe they didn't. Maybe they just found a place. No, it looks like they built it. Because the walls, right? The way it's Because it's so big. Yeah. That does look like they made it. I don't know. Maybe they're just using a really, really good lens. That is a really weird. Oh, there is. Yeah. Look, there's lensing on the side here. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe they did just shoot in there. Just used a really good lens. Well, what lens did you use? It's a really cool <laughs> bathroom <Yeah>. set. <laughs> I like it. Either way, it's a good looking set. Yeah. Two people in a single stall bathroom, like. That's a nightmare shoot on a on with a dolly shot. Yeah, and how far away are the exactly? <laughs> like I feel like I'm inside the wall right yeah. now. Like that's got to be either <gasps> on the other side of the wall or three walls. Yeah, or like a freaking T-stop lens at ten millimeter. I uh, I liked the kidney explosion. Love effect. That, that was it my was, favorite part of the whole That was it was so quirky and that fun. was really hilarious to me like it wasn't i 
I was confused as to what Get happened. Get to the frame where it's just sticking out like on a stick. It looks like his intestines. <laughs> right. Okay. So right here. It's like his int. Oh yeah, his kidney is at the end there. Yeah. But but it, the way it came out looked like it was just a straight stick. So to me, it looked like he got shot with an arrow. <laughs> yeah, it did feel like. <laughs> that. I thought so as well. I thought he got stabbed with something. Yeah. But it was yeah. kind of funny. It looked cartoony. Which it I, totally I know looked cartoony, but that's, I'm sure that's I think that's allowed. Yeah. But I'm like, uh, <laughs> the I felt like a kidney would be bigger, <laughs> but maybe that's accurate. I don't know. Dude, I, I thought it was awesome. I felt physically ill, by the way, when uh, when he punched him in the gut and he I'm started the, bleeding. Really? Yeah. That got you, huh? That, that like anything stomach wise or kidney wise, really gets to me, and that was horrifying to me. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I thought he got stabbed. I thought he got stabbed too yeah. for a second. It just it just felt like it, that was another one of those moments where until they revealed that it was all a fantasy, I was just like, this is just absurd. Right. I'm like, that guy after giving all these lectures is going to punch him in the kidney? And that's what I was like, thinking Like direct too. in the kidney? Yeah. See? His face is right there and he's just like stomach punches him? I'm like, what the? It's, it's things that you can explain away to at the end, which is kind of like. You have to wonder if that was part of the intention or not. Yeah. Uh, what do you see here in terms of how they did this? Is that even there? There's probably fishing wires, and they probably pulled it. I think, yeah, I think that's real. <laughs> that looks real. That looks so funny. Cause it looks like it's on a piece it, of yeah. elastic. It looks like, like he's holding, thumbs. like, a like his, his intestine. I feel like they reversed it. And, like, it, it's wiggling around. I kind of feel like it's on elastic, and they have it stretched out, and then they let go of it, and it snaps in. I don't think it's reversed. That was wacky. It is really wacky. <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering why. I, I feel like the fact that it went out completely straight is yeah. some kind of pr- practical purpose. Yeah. Like it, they had to do it that way for some reason for it to work. I feel like that too. So I'm trying to figure out what that was. You know why? It yeah. might have been had. To, it might have to do with like. How do you show something like, I like that? that shot a lot. In, in, That's to, in the way Dutch. that their their vision had it, none of them no. really react. You think you think that was intentional? What the this part? pulling it straight out? Yeah, where, absolutely. Where it's like a stick. Yeah, I could see it because to me it does suggest that like the kidney wants to get away from him. That would make more sense to me. Yeah, like the kidney is trying to get yeah, away. Yeah, that makes out. more sense if he's like trying to catch it, but it's like. It'd make more sense if it was Ugh, making noise. That looks so gross. That would be awesome. If it made it's noise. It's like crying like a baby. That's what I imagined was. <laughs> like a racer head. <laughs> yeah, what happened? <laughs> but the then, kidney has little eyes on it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> but then everyone is saying, you know, give it to me. You don't deserve it. Yeah, I did love that part, though. That part didn't make any sense to me. It looks like her head. Why'd she do that? Why'd she do that? <laughs> she sliced her head on the slicer. That's a lot of uh, strawberry glaze. It looks delicious. Not sure mm. why that was mm. there. Fireworks, bam. Psh. The fireworks, yeah, they were cut in beautifully. I like the fireworks a lot. <clears throat> they did a nice job. They're coming up here. Aren't like, they? <clears throat> I like all the lights in this scene, the way it's lit. It's really yeah. cool. Really cool. That's a cool shot. I like the slow motion too, yeah. It's great. And then I love the fast cuts at the end here. It's good stuff. Wow. Wow. Just wow. Uh, then really hated this part. Oof. Yeah, then went, <laughs> then oh. my heart sunk into my, my stomach. My heart sunk <laughs> into <laughs> my kidneys. <laughs> no. And I went, no. Why? Uh, do we have more to say? Shall we move on to the old questions? The old questions. The old questions. Or the new questions. Oh, yeah, because we have a a little segment for that. (laughs) Huh. It's new. Yeah. A little graphic. Are we going to get graphic? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Questions? You have any questions? We're here. This is it. Thank you. We made it. (laughs) We do that in post. (laughs) We, We don't have to do it here. Uh, okay, uh, D, begin us with our question. Begin please. us. Begin us. Begin us. Initiate. 
This is part of the show where we talk directly to the filmmaker because we have questions that we want them to answer. So Shelby. If you... <laughs> so if you want to uh, What's her name? join us Shelby. and, and uh, ask questions also, that would be awesome. Leave some questions in the comments. Usually the filmmaker comes down and answers them for us. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, let's get started with our questions. Here we go. I'll go first. Here we go. Um, so to me... I felt like this film had a very dark aesthetic and it makes me feel like you had something in your past that was connected with this personally. Uh, and you wanted to bring that out kind of like how I talked about whiplash, how it feels like there's a dark thing going on there internally for the person. So was that your intention to bring like this kind of darkness to, uh, to people's eyes to make them kind of understand that there's a, there's a much more uh, intricate idea happening here. What are you doing? What's wrong? Huh? <laughs> I was just yawning. With your eyeballs? Yeah, I was trying to keep it low key. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's my question. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Keys. You're welcome, Mr. Ballantyne. Uh, is it my turn? No. It's Taylor's Taylor. Turn. Oh, I get to go. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what was what did you make this movie for and i don't mean like what is your intentions with the film but like was this part of a school project or was this something that you did uh post school it obviously looks like you have a lot of experience to make something as uh, heavily produced as this with this massive cast so or and credits i mean crew uh, so what is the story of this film? Where did it come from and what did you make it for? Was it just personal uh, movie making, festival stuff? Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, do you want to you want a do over on that? <laughs> can, we, can we take a do over on that question? You What did you make this for? <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> uh Shelby hey uh so beautiful production I mean just beautiful movie all top to bottom I loved the kidney being expelled from the body effect and I want a full breakdown (laughs) as to how you did it because yeah I love I love engineering those kinds of effects and all the creative ways you can make them happen uh so how'd you do that how'd you do yours it was cool Liked it. And, oh, wow, I think that brings us to the end of another episode of Carmen Line Short Review. Wow. Come. Yep. Carmen Line Short Review is over now. We're done? We're done here. Bye. Later. Um, so I'll see you guys back here around... Uh, when? Five, five uh, this when? This doesn't work. It actually doesn't work. Um, you just going to...